Hello, Charlotte here with the Joyful Soul Creates. Here in Finland, it's been pretty hot lately. I don't know how it is in your part of the world, but we've had some rather warm weather and I thought now would be the perfect time to create a summer inspired birthday card. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a fun tone on tone pattern using just stamps and inks. And this is a design team project for Skull and Crossbands. So I will be featuring some of their products that they have sent me for use in design team projects. So I'm going to start with ink blending a panel of white cards. It's just a snippet that I had left over. I made sure it would fit the dies that I want to use later. And I divided it into three pieces because I want to use three different colours and I don't want to blend them together. So I just used a pencil to draw a line in to separate each of the segments and I'm going to ink blend each of my colours into them. As I showed you, I'm going to be using three colours of inks from Catherine Pooler and I'm using Limoncello, Tiki Torch and Lime Ricky. The Limoncello is the yellow that I started with and now I'm moving on to the Tiki Torch which is a nice vibrant orange and perfect for summer cards. I'm just using a makeup brush for my ink blending but there are a lot of great ink blending brushes out there so you can use whatever you like, whatever you have on hand and whatever you find most useful. You can also use the old foam ink blending tools that everyone's familiar with. They will give a heavier coverage normally than the coverage you get with ink blending brushes so it just depends on the look that you are going for. I did use the same brush for both the yellow and the orange because the colours are quite similar so it didn't really matter if there was any contamination. I did switch to a different brush for the green though just because I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be muddying up the colours in between because the orange and the green might mix to make a bit of a muddy colour. And once I'm done with all my ink blending I'll just rinse those with water. You can use soap and water if you want to make sure they're clean but for the most part water will get most of the ink out because these are dye inks and they do wash out very easily with water. When I removed my post-it tape that I'd used just to mask off the sections I realised I had slightly gone into my yellow panel with the orange so there's a bit of a line down there but you'll see that doesn't really matter in the end. I did just to speed things up use my wow dual speed heat gun to dry off the panel and then I checked it was completely dry by putting some embossing powder on and making sure it wasn't going to stick anywhere because I am going to be doing some embossing on this. I have the little citrus slice from the Tropical Party stamp set and I'm just going to be stamping that all over my card with a Simon Says Stamp clear embossing ink. This is a nice sticky ink that is perfect for using with embossing powders because they will grip to it nicely before you heat set them. It's a bit difficult to see where I have stamped on camera before adding the powder but I could see it clearly enough when I was doing the stamping so it wasn't a problem with making the pattern. Once I have all the stamping done I'm going to coat it with my clear embossing powder. I did treat the panel with my anti-static powder tool before I did my stamping just to make sure that none of the embossing powder was going to stick where I didn't want it to. I then made sure to let my heat gun warm up nice and hot and I'm going to pick up the panel with my reverse tweezers so that I'm not going to burn my fingers and here you can see how I melt that embossing powder. As I said I use clear embossing powder which gives me a nice tone on tone design on each of those panels. If you want to emboss and then do your ink blending then you will get white citrus slices instead of the coloured ones which was something I considered doing but in the end I decided I preferred the idea of going tone on tone for this design. I then have a bikini die this is from Simon Says Stamp and I'm going to position that onto my panel. I'm going to die cut the green first and I did play around working out exactly where I wanted it positioned to make sure I'm getting those citrus slices to show up on the bikini. I did have to fiddle a little bit to get the die cut out of the die and I used my reverse tweezers for this. I do have a pokey tool but to be perfectly honest I more often find myself reaching for the tweezers because they're just handier. There are little release holes in the back of the die that you can press the sharp tips of the tweezers into and it will just help to release that paper. Once I had the green out I repeated the process die cutting the orange bikini and then the yellow bikini 
and I will set those aside and work on my background. So I have a white card base and I decided I wanted to cover it with splatters. In order to tie the design together, I'm using the same three inks that I had used for my ink blending. I start with the yellow, which again was limoncello, and then I will do the tiki torch. I did decide to dry it after the tiki torch, partly because some of the splatters were very wet looking, but also because, again, I don't want the green mixing with the orange and turning muddy. You can see just in the bottom right hand corner that I did clean off my splattering paintbrush a bit just by spraying a little bit of the water onto my craft mats and kind of washing the paintbrush in that and that's just a very quick way to get it clean. The splatters incidentally do have a bit of shimmer to them because the water in my spray bottle has some perfect pearls mixed into it which adds just a bit of shimmer and sparkle to the design. You don't have to do this of course but it does add some extra interest and can be quite fun. With the background completely dry I decided to have a play around with how I wanted to lay out these bikinis that I had die cut and after some fiddling I decided I wasn't entirely happy with how they looked directly against the card base. I like the card base, I like the bikinis, but I felt like something else was needed. So what I decided I would do was add some vellum. I have this lawn fawn stitched oval die and that will act as a kind of barrier between the card base and the bikinis. It just kind of softens the design a bit. Once I have that die cut, once again, I am going to play around working out exactly where I want these bikinis placed because this will help me work out where to put my sentiment. Whilst I'm doing that, I just quickly want to say that I am using a metric size card base. So this is half of an A4 sheet of paper, which is slightly different size from A2. It's very slightly narrower and very slightly taller, but I don't have any American size card for card bases at the moment. I'm trying to get hold of some more. So for now, I'm mostly doing these European sizes. So I apologize for that, but you can still do the same design on your A2 size cards. For my sentiment, I'm using Happy Birthday from the Quirky Sentiment stamp set, and I'm going to be heat embossing it in black. I did make sure to treat my vellum really well with my anti-static powder tool because it can cling and there was one bit where the powder stuck that I didn't want it so I brushed that off with a little paintbrush and then because vellum has a tendency to warp I made sure to only leave the heat gun on it for a very short period of time at a time so I kind of heated it and moved away, heated it and moved away until everything was nicely melted. I am going to use the squares on my craft mat to help me line up my bikinis to get them even and correctly in place. So I have taped my vellum down onto it with a little bit of washi tape just to hold it still and adhered the first bikini into place. It's always easiest to start with your central element on designs like this and then position the outermost elements based on where the central one is. I did adhere the top part of the yellow bikini down next but then I realised that actually because the bottoms are wider than the top parts it would make more sense to put the bottoms in first and then position the tops relative to the bottoms. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. You can see what I'm doing on screen so hopefully that helps to explain it and of course if you ever have any questions you can just drop me a comment in the comment box below and I'm always happy to answer any queries down there. Even with using the squares on my craft mat as a guide, I did manage to get these all slightly uneven, but that's not the end of the world. It's handmade, it doesn't have to be perfect. Off camera, I did add some little bits of foam tape behind the die cut pieces. You do want to make sure your tape is hidden behind these die cut pieces because otherwise it will show through your vellum. And then I'll just use my reverse tweezers to take the backing off of those. And again, I'm going to use my craft mat to help me line up my curb base and get that oval perfectly into position. I didn't fold the curb base before adhering it because I wanted it to be nice and flat and not have any bounce to it so that I could make sure I got it stuck on straight. So I did fold it down afterwards and then just crease the fold with my bone folder to make it nice and crisp. For a final touch, I decided to add some Nouveau drops. The yellow is 
limoncello, the orange is ripened pumpkin, and I believe the green is bottled green. So the limoncello is kind of translucent when it dries, the orange is more of a solid colour and the green has a metallic shimmery sheen to it. You can find links to all these products in the description box below. And there is a discount code for you for the Skull and Crossbones products, so if you want to get your hands on those, then make sure to check below for that and you can save some money on your purchase, which is always a perk. I added just the three clusters of the Nouveau drops and I'm going to tap them against the lid of the Nouveau bottle just to help them level out a bit and that will complete my summary birthday card. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found the technique useful. Creating tone on tone patterns with ink blending and heat embossing is such a fun way just to add your own touch to your die cut designs. Of course you could die cut pattern paper as well but this just makes it a bit more personal. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you have a particular idea for a technique you'd like to see in future then be sure to let me know that in a comment as well. Press the like button if you enjoyed this video and if you're not already a subscriber you can subscribe by pressing the button on screen. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye!